What is up? Episode 32 and also episode 1 of Road to Freaks. When Justin and I were 17 and 18, we wrote a script and did a short film for his senior project in high school called The Freaks Are All Right. And it was set around four kind of, uh, if you've ever seen the show The Inbetweeners, it's like that. Like they weren't they weren't nerd outcast, but they weren't the cool kids. So we, um, we wrote a script around that, we shot it, and for the past five years, I've wanted to redo it or do a continuation of it, um, something just to, to bring it back to life and kind of modernize it with our new, our new sensibilities, our new skills, everything. So uh, that is what we started planning on the road trip up to Pat's wedding in Georgia. So because of that, I, I bought uh, lavalier mics for us to wear, but they broke. Uh, I bought them, I tested them once, and then when I tried them uh, live, it was like chopping, like you know when you talk into a um, a fan and it sounds like this, it was, it was that sound and it was fucking awful. So it's just recorded directly off my phone and there is a large amount of road noise. I did everything I could to get that out, but it's definitely there. So... Uh, I, cut, I think episode 23, whichever one I did with uh, Jessica Lamason of Make Ads With Me, has the same kind of issue. So uh, I, I think it's still listenable. Um, yeah. I really hope it happens, which is the main reason that we're doing this podcast series. Uh, I, I think it, it'll give us a little bit of accountability. Uh, but who knows? Like, life happens. We live in two different places. Maybe we look at this in another five years and, and what happens. But uh, regardless, I hope you enjoy us brainstorming the, the um, I don't know, just brainstorming for The Freaks Are All Right 2, Road to Freaks, Electric Boogaloo. I don't think we, maybe we had a name. I don't know. If it's there, it's in the podcast. So, all right, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll do an intro for it, so we'll just jump is right into it. Is this Flaming Walnut 2, Electric Boogaloo? No, this isn't Flaming Walnut 2, this is the start of Freaks 2, The Squeakle. The Squeakle? Yeah. So this is gonna be its own series? Yeah, I figure we'll do a, a series where we just <laughs> kind of brainstorm. I, I want to document the entire process, because okay. I want us to, you know, actually do it. What about Road to Freaks? I like Road to Freaks. Since most of it's going to be to driving. Freaks, yeah. The Road to Freaks. All right, so that's what it's called. Okay. The Road to Freaks. Um, so, hey, everyone. So, when we were 17 and 18, we wrote a short film for Justin's senior project in school yep. called The Freaks Are All Right. And we decided we're going to do a another, like, a follow-up, right? Yeah. It's been, like, 10 years since we made it. Yep. So, we're going to... We're on a road trip now going up to Pat's wedding. So we're going to use this time to do a little brainstorming. Yeah, I mean, we got six hours, so. Yeah, so I'm going to, I took some notes on my flight to, yeah, what's it at? It's yeah, good. I think eight's probably good. Eight's good. Um, so I took some notes, and I'm just going to share them with Justin right now. Yep. Uh, so things that I think could have happened, like uh, Crazy X, and, and, okay. Should we break down the characters first? Yeah, yeah, Just let's do that. give it insight? Yeah, also, so, yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Okay. Start, start with, um... So, I'll, I'll give, like, a little back, so, if people are interested in this. Um, so, basically, I had to make, uh, we had to all do something for our senior project. I was interested in making movies and writing, so I made, uh, inspired kind of like, uh, Freaks and Geeks and, excuse me, that 70s show. I wanted to make, like, a teen comedy short film. So I ended up making it about these four friends, which at this time, you know, I had four best friends. And uh, I each kind of took the aspects of their personality and kind of uh, expanded on it. Embellished. While, embellished, while also injecting what I was going through as a 17 to 18 year old. So liking a girl that doesn't notice me, me being smothered by my mom, or, you know, wanting to wreak havoc and rebel, even though, you know, we lived in a really, fine like there was nothing really going on in our suburbia very suburban so basically we made it it's 
I, I haven't watched it in 10 years, but I'm sure it's cringy, but these characters resonated, I think, with Josh and I so much. Mostly Josh, because you've been pretty pushy about wanting to do it. Yeah, dude, I've been saying I want to do something like this for the past, I think, five four years, years yeah. four or five years. Just because I, I did really like the characters, and more than that, I really liked the the time that we spent doing it. Yeah. Because we, so we did uh, the short itself, which was like 22 minutes. Yeah. Um, that was our entire spring break, too. Yeah, like we, we spent we, the we, whole week. Yeah, we'd get up at like 6 in the morning, record a couple scenes, and then I would go home and edit. Yeah. <laughs> on a Sony Handycam. On a Sony Handycam on a desktop computer with half a gig of RAM. Yeah. I couldn't rent... I could, my computer couldn't handle the entire 22 minutes at once. Oh, really? Yeah, so I had to break it into three separate edits and then combine and then them into one, one edit. edit. Yeah. Jesus. Dude, and that's why if you... if. Uh, I know you haven't watched it, but if you watch it, it has sidebars and top bars. No shit. <laughs> yeah, because it was on Sony Vegas, so gotcha. I had no idea what I was doing. Oh, Sony Vegas. Yeah. So the next one will probably be on a... Final Cut or something. Final Cut or something. Something, you know, manageable. Yeah. But it was good, and I, I remember that was one of the few times that I actually slept. Is he? Yeah, he's trying to get uh, away from Big the Big no problems. Hey, if he wants to pass, try to pass. That's, That's fine. fine. Um... Yeah, there was. I this think this guy wants to pass me too. I'm driving too slow. Well, there's just other people. I don't give a shit. Um, they. I want to get there alive. <laughs> uh, it was like the last scene we did. We were supposed to film at like six, but I stayed up late editing. Yeah. And you guys all got there, and I just woke up with three of you standing in my room, be like, "Hey, yeah, get up. We got to do this." And you're like, "What?" Uh, oh, the door was open. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't like wearing a shirt then. Yeah, I still don't. <laughs> At least I was wearing pants. Yeah, you were wearing underwears. Yeah. But but that that was one of my favorite uh, childhood childhood memories. Childhood yeah, memories. like I, I always loved making films and like shorts with you guys. Yeah. So spending an entire break doing yeah. that was a lot of fun. That was like the dream. Yeah. Us doing that. That's why whenever we get to the filming process, I fully plan on taking a week off work yeah. to just come down here and, and shoot it. I think or you, wherever we go. Yeah. Because I know we... So we did a little bit of talking beforehand about um, what... Plot and yeah, plot and stuff. Location. And I uh, started looking... I'm hoping there's some sort of incentive we can do. I think New Mexico and, and New York both have it, where there's a zero minimum. So this isn't going to make sense to the listener, but Josh is trying to Josh it. Yeah, yeah, Josh. I'm, I'm trying to Josh it. Hey, we can make money doing it. Fuck uh, yeah. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And then, you know, we can put it on the indie circuit, at least in Florida. Yeah, dude. Which I mean, me and Isaiah or me and Mike could always tour. Yeah. And I think uh, Isaiah's already done. Yeah. He's been in Gasparilla Film Fest. Like, that's a, a pretty good, like, a big one and a good one to get into. Yeah. He usually goes through different film circuits. He submits a fuck ton. Like, he has a lot of insight in the indie world because of uh, what he's done. Yeah. So I, I think we've got a good chance. At least, to, and, and honestly, it'll just be something cool for us to have. Oh, for sure. Another time capsule for you. For yeah. you. Yeah. Of what we were doing at 30. Ugh, we're almost, almost 30. Almost 30. Not quite. Two 30. years, dude, <laughs> for you. One year for me. Yeah, but it's still a whole year. Think of what, what life was like a year ago. Very different. Very different. So, okay, I'm going to go over some of the stuff that I wrote down on the plane. Please. Um, I hope that's not too loud. I wouldn't think so. No, me like picking it up. Oh. <laughs> I don't want that to be too loud. Is it still going? Yeah, it's going. Okay. Uh, so I pulled from our lives and just... Because I, I don't know if it's going to be more of a comedy, a, a dark comedy, or just like straight, haha, fun, fun. Yeah. So some of the stuff that I think are big notes that we can tackle. Um, I had a super crazy ex, so we could do something with that. Yeah. Um, I work from home and I did freelance for a long time, so work from home isolation. Yeah. Mike does that now too. Um, yeah, like three days out of the week. Three days out of the week. Rediscovering old passions, because that was, D&D was very similar to the stuff we liked in high school but never did. Yeah. And that, I think the, the past like two or three years has been us just rediscovering stuff that we enjoyed. Oh, definitely. Uh, I also credit one of your, your key points to going into things and rediscovering things I love because I had to do that personally. I had to rediscover who I was outside of my marriage. So divorce is, is one that you, you put down. Yeah, and that, that's a big one that, that I think, is, as long as you're good to talk about it, oh, is yeah. like, there's a lot of material there Definitely. for you to work on. 
I'm pretty open to, to talking about it. I don't mind that. So, yeah, I think that's, I, I definitely, I wasn't sure which one. I think it was your character I really want. I think should go through a divorce. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense for <laughs> Also, because your crush and uh, arguably probably your ex-wife is the name of my actual ex-wife. So... Is it? Yeah, the character's name is Chelsea. Oh, that's right. Oh, shit, I forgot about Did that. We dox her? We didn't say her last name. No, 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 that's fine. We're not saying where she lives or anything. Either. Yeah, exactly. She doesn't even go by that. That's not her legal name. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. So, yeah, <gasps> Cooper would be the one to go through a divorce, most likely. So. Um, and the, the last life point was like losing, getting fat and then getting back into a healthy state. Yeah. Um, I think those are all things and they don't have to be big plot points, yeah, but no. just stuff. Yeah. Um, so not like life changing, but still life altering, but we're not moving that. Right. Right. Yeah. So those are the, the main ones that I was thinking of. Okay. Aside from that, just stuff like I, I could really only think of my own. Thing. So I was thinking that yeah. someone should be in crypto. Uh, carnivore diet could be an interesting thing that I think would be... Did we say Skylar? I mean, it's Mike, so Mike doesn't eat vegetables. Yeah. So it makes sense for his character to not eat vegetables and just continue <laughs> to eat meat. Yeah. Um, what else did I have? Oh, Skylar was going to be uh, like a pro gamer. Yeah, streamer. Like a Twitch streamer. I think that would be good. I think so too, because that kind of talks about it. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, we should go over what the characters were, too. Okay. So, if you want to jump let's, on that. Yeah, let's hit with... So, Cooper was, like, the, the Eric Foreman kind of character, which was your character. Back in, like, high school, you were the... I would say you were the cleanest cut out of all of us. For sure. You were kind of the... I don't want to say you were generic looking, but you were the most, like... You are you know, white boy with blue eyes and brown hair, and you had, like, the bowl cut going on, and... You I have a, a little, bowl cut. It was like the shaggy bowl cut. Okay. I had a shag, okay. Yeah. During that time, okay. before it was like the that. wings when we all had long hair. Yeah, I'll give you that. Um, but yeah, you kind of had like the Eric Foreman, Topher Grace. You were lanky, like wanted to make a character like I wanted this to be my my main character because you were the Foreman. You were like our insight into this weird kind of clique. Or if you wanted to freaks and geeks it, it's um you know you were Linda. You know, Lindsay or whatever her name is. Yeah. Uh, in the in the show, you were the in. You were the in with these these, you know, weird characters that don't fit in. Um, you were interested in a girl. You had a very embarrassing incident in second grade, and that that was just little character beats. Like we didn't have a lot that we, you know, that you that I had on the page that you didn't add in. So you added a lot in yourself. You made him very unsure of himself. Mm -hmm. His confidence level was very down. Um, you know, he was this bright kid uh, from the standpoint. Once again, I haven't read it or read the script or watched, watched it in a while. Time. But, you know, that's what I kind of gauged from how you performed him. Yeah, the, the way that I always interpreted him was <clears throat> the, the Eric Foreman everyman. And he just wanted something more but didn't know what more there was. Right. Like, the we did, uh, we did one-minute shorts where we talked to the... Sound a little bit more. Yeah. Um, where we talked to the the camera. Yeah, we did like hard, like confessional style. Yeah, like confessional. Um, and mine was just like sitting on a roof. Yeah. Because it was just like more than just sitting inside. It was just like I don't know, like you wanted what to add more for him. Yeah, it's like there's got to be something, something more than just this small town, which is a very Eric Foreman thing as yeah. well. But that was a, a lot of how I saw the character. Not sure about himself, felt like there was more to like, but didn't know what it was and didn't yeah. have any sort of guidance. Because I think yeah, even sure. in the in the intro, it's just, I think it's just him and my brother, him and his brother. Yeah, right? it's him and his brother, who we named Zach because of the, Zach lived in the attic. Yeah. Because <laughs> Eli looked like you. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But that, that's how I always saw the character. Right. So how do you see the character now? I would imagine... Like, if you, you dived in back onto him, what would he be doing right now? I think the divorce makes a lot of sense. I think because so I think... It, it, it was said at the end of, of high school, right? Yeah. So I like to imagine that he and Chelsea got... Like, they got married. Like a Tor Corey and Zepanga kind of thing? Yeah. And then it just didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they became two different people. Yeah. So... That happens, naturally. Yeah. So I, I imagine he would go through that... He would, I don't know what sort of job he would have, but he would, he would be going through the rediscovery phase. Um, yeah. 
maybe like I think taking a piece from you and doing like coding or something where he's sedentary a lot mm-hmm. would be would make sense for him because that's one how a lot of the jobs are going for like millennials and two it's just it's it's something one that you already have an insight in uh-huh. and I, I I feel like it's a more mainstream like people don't go to like the workforce or the office anymore to like I gotta go do stonks <laughs> like like people are coding now people are you know doing their own like startups and shit yeah so and I wonder mm-hmm. I wonder if I'm unsure if we should make him successful or well I think Nikki's character should be successful I think like what we need to really think about and we never did this in the last one because we were 17 18 we everyone I feel like should have a miniature art I agree, yeah. So your miniature art could be like you're working for someone else and then you decide to do your own thing. That That's what I was about to get to, yeah. was should... Sorry, it, the gun. It's okay. If he's doing uh, remote work, <clears throat> is it something like what I do now that's pretty, <clears throat> like, like it's very white collar? Yeah. And, and, or should it be something more like a help desk where he feels that, like a continuation like of... Huh? Like an IT kind of thing? Yeah, like an IT help desk. Where okay. where he still feels like there's got to be more, but this is, like, stable right yeah. now. Yeah, I, I think that could work. Um, yeah, so I think I think that would be really interesting. I think, like, either there's a year separation from the divorce, or I don't want it to be fresh, because then that's a completely different character. Right. You'd be a little bit more of a sad sack, because I was a sad sack. Uh, you wouldn't really have a motivation to do that. Like, the art could be him getting through that, but I feel like there should just be, like, you're a year or so out, there's still lingering feelings about it, but you're not devastated. I kind of see it like Scott Pilgrim dealing with, um, not Ramona. Envy. Envy, yeah. yeah. Where it's been enough time, but he really hasn't fully dealt with it. He's just kind of bottled it up. Yeah. So that if, if she comes back into the picture or someone mentions her, he gets, it's like a, oh. Yeah. Oh, he just kind of sinks in his chair. Right. So I think that is a is a, a good character set up for Cooper. I think so. So do you think that is his arc is moving past, letting go of the past, and looking towards the future? Yeah, I think because I know rediscovering old passions is something that. Yeah, it, it, it's something that one of the characters needs to be doing, and I. Think I I think that makes sense for Cooper because it aligns very well with the, and it, it's following your story. Yeah. I, I, I still think a lot of this is going to be the different aspects of you yeah. with embellishments of the three to four of us. Well, of course. So I think that could be, that might be his, his characterization. Right. So, okay. but that's Cooper. That's Cooper. Uh, the next big one was like, I was the, was Xander, mm-hmm. Alexander, which was the, he was like the, um, he was the Randall to your Dante. He was supposed to be like, <laughs> yeah. he was supposed to be the rise cracky. Like I wrote him like what arguably I thought were the best lines. And I just, I really enjoyed him. He was a character that I remember. So when I re- originally conceived it was, it was a summer in, um, West Haverstraw, New York, or very upstate New York where my dad lived by the mountains in a fucking like towny house, like a really cramped bungalow. And we just kind of talked about it. I'm like, I want to do this. He's like, you should make one of them like really fucked up. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, make them like an ego terrorist or something. I'm like, they have those. Like I didn't, I was sheltered. I didn't know about shit like that. And he told me about the, uh, people when they were going to cut down trees, they would do the axes like in Fern Gully with the spray paint. Yeah, yeah. And then people would put nails in the middle of the X because it would knock the chainsaw off its track and then that would end in dismemberment or something. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was the character in hindsight. He was the he was supposed to be like we only have one earth, we need to take radical movement. Like he was my rebellious side. He was my rebellious side in the fact like I'm not gonna follow your rules, fuck you. He was everything I wanted to be as a sheltered, you know, kid. I was more associated with Nikki's character. Right. But he was an aspect of my personality that, you know, when I was finally allowed to you know, drive anywhere with you guys and like do other things. I leaned more into that of like, Justin's going to do whatever he wants to do. Cause this is my window to do, to let all that aggression out. Yeah. That wild card. So what I really wanted, like in, in his role in the, the film was, it was, he was less chaos. He was more controlled chaos than Skyler. He was the one who 
wanted to see his friends succeed. If he, if one of them got hurt, it was going to be a little funny. He was the hide. Yeah, yeah. He was the hide. You know, he didn't have a great relationship with his parents. He was very independent. Um, I think his first lines are, it's root beer, you prude. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, he's very blunt and, you know, he's very anti-authority. That's why we're like, we can't go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Which was, which is stupid. Um, so... I think for, like, where he'd be at now is, I think it'd be very similar to, you know, my first foray into a corporate kind of job, which was very soul-sucking for me. It was, you know, when I used to work as a maintenance man at a certain department store, uh, I had a lot of time to myself, and I used to still create. Like, I would still write in my head, and then I'd be able to, like, jot it down somewhere. Yeah. But the minute I worked at a call center, there was no downtime. So there was no time for me to kind of bounce ideas off of myself because I was always answering calls. And then eventually it just became that. And so I think like a snuffing out of, you know, who Xander was and making him this corporate yes man. I, I akin him to uh, Still Waiting, the, the movie where Justin Long at the end comes in and makes a cameo as himself. Yeah, yeah. He's a district manager. His character's a district manager at this point, And he fucking hates it. And he hates himself. But... He makes a lot of money and he's comfortable. Yeah. But he's like, I fucking like, I remember there's like, uh, like they keep talking about it throughout, like, man, corporate's going to come. And then corporate's Justin Long. Yeah. And if you remember Justin Long at the end of the first movie, he quit and he was leaving. Yeah. And he was going to go off and like go with the girl or whatever. And then in the second one to find out that the ultimate irony is he's working for the corporation that he fucking hated at a higher level. And now he's the guy that you know, 10 years ago, he would have hated. Yeah. I think is an ultimate irony that I've always wanted for Xander. So you want him to have a negative character arc? I don't want him to have a negative character arc. I want him to come in negative, and then his character arc is maybe he joins the startup with you. Or... Oh, okay, okay. Him, I, I was thinking he he's the one who should find refine the passion and reignite it. Because at this point, I feel like his personality is wake up, uh, go to work, because this is what my life is now. It's wake up, go to work, work, come home, go to bed. Gotcha. I think that should be his, that's his routine. And then occasionally it's like Skype call buddy session. Mm -hmm. And then you get flashes in the pan of who he used to be. But, you know, Monday through Friday, he's going to be the zombie, the corporate zombie. Or okay. The drone. So, so Xander's more of the dealing with being a corporate stooge. Cooper is more of the emotional, yeah, like becoming your own person. Again. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because I, I, one thing that we have to make sure is that they're not too, too similar. Concurrent. So I would say yours is uh, reigniting passion. I would say Xander is finding individuality, okay. finding his individual self again. Okay. Yeah, because I think if if Cooper is freelance or call center from his house. He's like hyper individualized, yeah. but doesn't have a community right. in that way. Because that's something that I dealt with when I was doing freelance by myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, yeah, I could do whatever I wanted, but I didn't, I couldn't hang out with a lot of people because my yeah. schedule was the opposite. And then like the wrist injuries happened and everything. For sure. So, so I, yeah, I think that, I think that's kind of what I want for him for his art, which is finding out who he was again, whether it's, you know, joining campaign for a green movement less radical mm -hmm. i would make him less radical than how i originally intended him but yeah. you know him still concerned about you know environmental issues mildly political but not because you know i'm not super political but yeah finding that individual breaking that routine you know that's that's my arc for him and if that's you know i think also what should be a main focal point like there should the a plot is Everyone has isolated themselves from their own thing, and the other plot is getting them all together again. So I think that's the art for me, is them finding a way to continuing to be a family again. Right. Yeah, because you had mentioned having the three. Cause, so Nikki, if we can get him for a cameo, we're going to do that. He played yeah, Quentin. Yeah. But uh, realistically, we haven't really talked to him yeah, in years. I haven't talked to him in 10, I haven't talked to him in 10 years. Yeah, he kind of... Like drifted well, off in well, college. He's doing his own thing. He was able to find himself, and you know, he found a, a close community of people, and 
you know, and that's fantastic of him. I think possibly he'd be up for it. I think he'd be susceptible to it or open to it. Yeah. Uh, it would just, we would have to just carve out like a two hour window for him. Yeah. We'd have to have everything written and just say, Hey, here, do this. Do you want to do this with us? This yeah. is what we're looking to do. And I think he'd be open to it. Um, yeah, me too. Quentin but... is, um, Quentin was our, our kind of fourth, uh, boy. He was the, he's more of the gentler of the, the four, Mama's boy. He was, he was, he had an overbearing mother, which my mother is overbearing. So that's, and at the time yours was too. Your parents were very strict at that time. Yeah, they were. Um, so it was kind of a combination of them. It was like my worst case scenario of I'm, I'm going to be trapped with my mom forever. Always taking care of her. I'm going to die living with my mom. And that was basically the antithesis of his character. His mother cut his hair, like his mom controlled his life. And despite the fact that Nikki didn't tell us he was cutting his hair and got a haircut and we were all super pissed off and like <laughs> 17 year old bullshit. It worked really well in the long run. Yeah. Drive got, home the point of that character. Yeah. I just felt bad that we had to cut out him from all the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> because we had to read. So originally the story, I forget the exact plot, but we were all together yeah. doing whatever the adventure was. And then because he, he cut his hair, we rewrote it so that he was just gone for part of the the episode and then he came back and his hair was all yeah chopped up yeah so he like I think he went from having maybe his long hair like we all have long hair as teenagers because that's what you do but it's like messy long hair there's no rhyme or reason I mean fuck we're doing that now yeah but we're doing it in a more (laughs) controlled environment a nicer way yeah. yeah I'm doing like the sides and you're doing like like you've gotten past the point of surfer look which is what we had as kids yeah now I'm business bohemian now you're like business caveman you're a Geico caveman I'm a Geico gay man, yeah. yeah. With, like, better teeth. Oh, definitely. Definitely thank, better teeth. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but where, where were we? Uh, right Quentin there? was the mama's boy. He was the mama's boy. He was boy. a combination of both of us with our strict parents in different ways. Right. And so, because I, he's not going to come out to do it, but having him kind of start off and reignite this flame under the three of the, the other three, I think he's a very important part. I think he's the catalyst. Yeah. For that's what my antithesis is for him, which is much like Nikki did for us. Like we were to Nikki, like he outgrew us Mm -hmm. and he was able to find his own thing. I think his character should be the most successful. I think his character should be like, Hey, you know, I love you guys, but I can't be doing like hanging out every week online anymore. I have my own life. I have things I need to take care of. Like if we can, get together that'd be great and we're like oh you're gonna get together this year and he's like no i can't yeah. like him being the adult yeah yeah we had talked about um setting it up as a yearly like trip like a yearly trip that that we would do since we're all in different places what i think we should do is i think we shouldn't have a, had a yearly trip yet you want to start the yearly i trip? want to start the yearly trip with him being the catalyst of like we haven't talked to each other and like we haven't seen each other in years like give all these reasons and we should be like well we should change that let's fucking change that. And then, you know, that is the catalyst for like the first trip and getting through those, like, you know, sometimes like getting old friends together, there are unsaid things. There's like pangs, like hunger, like growing pains with that. Yeah. Or just like you regress to who you were, Mm -hmm. even if you have progressed in a certain way. And I think I, I honestly really want to start it out as a, uh, D and D and JD stream because we have the screen for it. I think that's a, a fun, like, like integration. So how this, I mean, the, without it, that's how this whole kind of came back. Yeah. I mean, I don't even remember how, did you just like text me to tell me about the divorce? And then I Maybe. said, come visit. <clears throat> I might've, I think I told you around when we separated, I was like, she, you know, I have to start looking for a new house, like a new place. And like, I, I was at a loss at that time. So yeah, you said, yeah, try to get your mind off things. Also, because the wrestling pay-per-view I was going to go to was in Orlando. And I'm like, can I just hang out with you for the weekends? Oh, yeah. So that's what yeah. it was. And then I got a flat tire on Monday, and I didn't leave until Tuesday. That's right. But, but it worked out, because, I, I mean, when when you got there, I, I, somehow we were talking about how you just really wanted to do D&D, and we ended up yeah. just going to Barnes & Noble? Yeah. We, we went somewhere and we just picked up Barnes the starter Noble. kit. Yep. And then I think the... It was either that weekend or the next weekend we did a, a short one-shot. It was the, the same weekend. It was the same weekend? The same weekend, because I couldn't figure out how fighting worked. 
That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't make you guys find anything. And I didn't know... I had a general idea of how uh, DCs work, so like persuasion rolls and all that, but I had either them too high or too low for when you guys rolled to persuade. I remember what it was. It was you and Mike with Chart and Chris Angel. Yeah. Um, where you guys woke up in a bar, hung over, and you had tattoos, and the mini was... One shot was to figure out where the tattoos came from. Yep, that sounds right. And uh, you kind of just went around the town, you asked, and that was about it. Uh, and <clears throat> anyway, we're getting into D&D. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it, bringing it to that kind of homage and how we reconnected, because if it wasn't for D&D, I wouldn't be going to this wedding. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you would have probably, you and Mike probably would have flown, or, you know, maybe you and Mike would have made this trip together, or anything in like that but because you know it's literally been two years now because it was for your birthday yeah it was you know come up did you learn how to play it yet i think so let's play it and i'm like okay yeah and i think we recorded like eight hours that day right yeah no we did the we did the regular three and a half maybe five and then you're right we did the the mongo one shot yeah dude that was so much fun it was fun, and that was just me pulling shit out of my ass. Yeah. Um, but I digress. I think, yeah, bringing it back and then using it and Nikki as a catalyst because, you know, he's going to be missed. I'm going to miss him on doing something like that. I think it'd be fun to literally get everyone 10 years later. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, yeah, that's unfortunately what needs yeah. to be done. But I think using him as a catalyst is where I want his kind of arc to be. And maybe, you know we can reach out or like at the end of it, we're like taking pictures and we just send them all to him and you know, we get like another, maybe we can get him for another voice cameo or something or a screen cameo. Like, Hey, saw the pics. It looked like a lot of fun. How about we plan it? I'll plan it for next year or something like that. Give yeah. Like, that'd be awesome. What was that? What song? is that? Oh, it's Django Unchained. <laughs> it <laughs> got really ab- loud though. That was an abrupt change. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. And if, if he can't do it, then we'll figure something else out. But, for sure. But, um, you know, I, I, I do want him included because I do miss him. Yeah. Like he, he was a very important person to me growing up. Same. Same. You know. Um, so, Skyler. That's Skyler's the last, the last one. one. That's Mike's character. Mike was, at that point, Skyler was like the Kelso. Yeah. He was the one that, he kind of got picked on a little bit. He was the one who would say yes to anything. Um always wanted to try to impress his friends, make his friends happy and laugh. That was my, my idea for him. And he was more of my, my people pleasing and, you know, whatever someone would make me do something or, you know, me trying to overcompensate and have people like me. That was my Skylar. Did he do the cherry bomb or did Xander? No, Skylar did the cherry bomb because he was also impulsive, which was part of like my ADD that I have. Right. Is I used to be very impulsive. Um, so I think now, and Mike is, or Skylar was the character who, our big A plot, or our B, our a, B plot, because the love story was the A plot. Yeah. The B plot was Xander and uh, Skylar went to go uh, free a cow from a farm. Oh, yeah. And Skylar got kicked in the chest because cows kick forward. Yeah. Which was a weird detail my dad gave me. He's like, someone should get kicked in the chest trying to go cow tipping because you guys are in fucking Florida. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, cows kick forward. So you guys can be like in front of the cow. And then one of them just gets fucking knocked out. And I love that, that to show that he got kicked in the chest. Yeah. We just wrapped toilet paper around his shirt. Yeah. Cause we didn't have medical bandages. <laughs> no, or at least not enough. Yeah. Or nope. East bandage. <clears throat> oh my God. So I think I, don't, I could see that going either, either he like falls from that chaotic. Yeah. Like personality to being very reserved for yeah. whatever reason or almost he, stoic yeah stoic but more like a scared like he's he's too af- a scared a scared, a scared. A scared. <laughs> i was gonna say scared. <laughs> no but more like he's afraid to do things now yeah like he's, he's afraid to take risks because because he doesn't have anyone because his his characterization was that his family was just non-existent i thought it was yeah he was living with his grandma was it his grandma i think so okay so he was like living he had with his extra parental unit but whatever it was, he had to take care of. Yeah. Like, he was he was very responsible in the home, which is why he was, like, batshit crazy yeah. outside of it. So I could see it where, where he had to lean into being the caretaker. 
I would think it would probably be after his grandma passing. Like, have his grandma pass. That could happen. And that person that he was taking care of is just, you know, non-existent anymore. And now it's mostly he's reserved again and he has to take care of himself. And maybe he had to grow up a lot quicker than the other two did. Yeah. Which I think would also be interesting to watch uh, Mike play. Yeah. Maybe we need someone who didn't change. Because right now, the like, your character is in, like, a rule state. Yeah. Because, right, we don't have anyone who who like, is learning the like error a, of their ways. Like an end of the world kind of thing where it's, you know, King, like a Simon Pegg's character where he, ran, you know, they try to do the Golden Mile and he's the only one who hasn't grown up. Yeah, yeah. But that might be an interesting angle. It would be an interesting angle. It'd be one who would be doing it. I think it, you could go that direction if we're going fresh off the boards, Cooper, and Cooper goes a little manic. Like, everything in his life is, like, falling apart. Quentin doesn't want to do the podcast or the stream anymore, and I haven't seen my friends in person in ten years, and, you know, Chelsea right. has left me, and I don't know what to do with my life. I'm extremely unhappy. He gets a little manic. Yeah. And he's like, remember when we used to go cow tipping? And we're like, we don't want to do that anymore. What are you talking about? Right, right. Cow tipping. Like, I think that would also be interesting because he was the foreman. So if Ed, like, everyone else grew up, but Eric Foreman is trying to relive the glory days. Right. You could try to do that. I think you could also knock that out of the park. Okay. Because I don't think it would work for, it could possibly work for Xander of being unhappy. Um, did I ever tell you the uh, the short I wanted to do with us where we were playing ids of just ourselves? Ids? Like, uh, us to, like, the 10th degree. Like, a lot of inside jokes to us, like Pickle Cat version Justin of... Oh, okay. Of okay. I don't think you did. Um, so, I wrote it around the time of when Mike and Pat lived together. Uh-huh. So, probably around, like, the April, like, maybe I, ju- I met Pat for the first time when they were living in the house. Like, 2012? Yeah. So, my id with that, or my story with that was, at that point, like, the minute I went to college and you went to college, like, we kind of fell off in the regard of, we didn't hang out. Like, talking was very sparingly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I lost touch. And my idea was I was going to come back. It was going to, it was basically like a spiritual sequel to Cecil. Okay. Like, there were a lot of the same character beats, which was like, I was going to come in and go, hey guys, like how I do when I come in in Cecil. Yeah, yeah. And it's you and uh, Mike living together. And, uh, you know, you guys were just. I, I, it was you guys were eating cereal there's a knock at the door it's kind of frantic and you guys kind of open the, the door and I come in and I'm just disheveled like Justin we haven't seen you in like four years man I'm like hey guys what's up and I come in and you're like is he on drugs like what's going on it was just when I wrote it it was very self deprecating to me mm-hmm. like I had you got you're, you both were playing the straight man and I was playing the manic right version of myself I'm like do you guys want to see a dead body because that was always one of the Shorts we always wanted to do, which was us doing, like, a stand-by me. Yeah, Like, yeah. a Canadian stand-by me or whatever. Like, you want to go and see the booty? <laughs> like, so it was me going, uh, do you guys want to see a body? And Mike going, like, I think Justin killed someone. And you being like, I'm intrigued, but if we find a dead body, we're citizen arresting him and calling the cops, right? Because he's fucking insane. Right. And so it was like, all right, yeah, Justin, we'll go and look at the dead body with you. And... You know, you guys starting to go to your cars. I'm like, no, guys, bikes. We're going on bikes like we used to. Like me trying to recapture 2009 us. Right, right. So that was the spirit of that short. Okay. And then the dead body, I forgot what it was going to be. It was going to be another reference to something we did. And it's like, you dragged us all the way out here. And why did you, like, it was going to be angry. And I'm like, because I missed you guys. Oh, I remember that. I do remember that. And I thought, you know, if it wasn't a dead body, you guys wouldn't want to come because you guys wanted to see it. Like, I was so delusional that me, instead of saying, hey, let's hang out, I needed to create a reason to right. to hang out. That makes sense. So, if we could do, like, I think doing something like that, like, someone being manic, whether it's any one of the three could be manic. So, I think what we could figure out is, you know, figure out which would be the for best for the story. Like, if Cooper was manic, what would be the reason for him being manic and bringing everyone together? Xander, what would be the reason why he's manic? Why is he bringing everyone? And if it was Skylar, what would be the reason for him to be manic and why? Yeah. Like, how would it I, be? I, don't, I don't know if we really need a, a manic person. <laughs> well, I, someone I, who's I, trying to grasp at 
bringing back him. Yeah, I, I think if that might be the case if we can't get Nikki to do his cameo. Okay. Because I think Nikki saying, like, y'all need to grow up kind of thing yeah. will be enough of an impetus to get one of the characters to do it. Probably, yeah. uh, I would say either Xander or Cooper. Yeah. That could really go either way. Yeah. But what I was trying to say about uh, Skyler's character is yeah. having him... Like, right now, all the characters have... Well, I guess Cooper wouldn't really have changed too much. I don't think so. So, Skyler can change. Yeah. I, I, I was just saying that we should have at least one character who's still kind of the same and yeah. then grows. Because Xander in this, right now, is rediscovering himself. So right. I don't know. I think the, the growing would be... I, I mean... You could still play into how you played him as a kid, which was he's unsure of himself. Definitely going to take a fucking confidence boost from the divorce. True. Like, he's a, you know, he's a, a voice on a phone. Like, people aren't going to respect him at all on the phone and he gets shit on. So I think keeping him the same in the regard of he never learned how to go outside of his comfort zone, do things that made him happy. That And that also plays into the rediscovery do things that make him happy, be confident, like self, having self-esteem, like, hey, I am a pretty awesome guy. Yeah. And this yeah. didn't work out, but that doesn't mean the next one isn't. Right. Yeah. So so he kind of put everything he was into Chelsea. Yes. Because gotcha. that's what I did. <laughs> right. So I think that would be, and that's not outside of the norm for most people. A lot of people, when they go into relationships, their identity leaves and they just become that relationship. Especially when it happens young. Yeah, of course. So, you know, it's never, you never think like Corey Matthews and Topanga, like I don't remember Topanga's last name. It's always Corey and Topanga. Oh, yeah. Wasn't it Topanga? Wasn't that her last name? No, Topanga was her first it name. was her first name? Yeah, I have no idea. But you never remember, you know, because Corey was the main character, you remember his last name, but it was always Corey and Topanga. And when you lose yourself in an identity of like that, it's always John and Jill. Or Cooper and Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now Cooper has to refine himself. I was terrified when I had to, like, I don't remember what I liked. I didn't remember, you know, I was more, cons- I was afraid to be alone because I'm like, I don't know if I like myself enough to be alone. Yeah. You know, so I think doing that and playing into that as far as his character and, you know, occasionally reaching out or something like that, I think would work. Okay. So it sounds like a lot of the, a plot is going to be Discovery. Yeah. And I think that could work for any one of the three. I, especially Cooper, though. I think it works for all three. Yeah. I think the... Whatever the B plot, or maybe even C plot we have, will be in there. But the main thing we're trying to showcase is uh, Discovery. And Rediscovery. Because I think that's something that we all also went through over the past couple of years. Oh, for sure. You know, like, I lost myself in work, for sure. Like, I was going way too hard. And then when... I, I worked so hard that my wrist basically <clears throat> broke. Yeah. Um, I couldn't play video games. I couldn't work out. I could barely drive. I couldn't pick up a cup. So all Jesus, those things. I didn't know that. It was really bad. Like, I would, you, you can't hear it on the podcast, but I would, like, claw it. Like, my hands were chopsticks, and yeah. that was the only way I could pick up a cup for about two weeks. And then and then it was, like, a little better, but yeah. not good. It took. But you did a lot of damage to the. A the lot t- of damage. Yeah. The cartilage, or what? What was it exactly? Uh, they never really found out. Oh, um, great! A lot of it was tension. Uh, one thing that I, I got a massage like two or three days ago, mm-hmm. and the the masseuse said my scalenes, which are the muscles, like from the the neck to the shoulder area, yeah. like this it makes like a scaly triangle. Yeah, uh, were quote the worst she'd ever seen. Oh, so <laughs> I think a lot of it was if this gets really pinched, mm-hmm. it cuts off blood flow. That and I think sense. I had no blood. It's like a car having no oil. Right. So it was just on fire. I couldn't do anything. Gotcha. Uh, which is why I'm like always fidgeting around trying to massage it. Oh, for sure. But yeah, we all lost ourselves in different things. Yeah, definitely. So Skyler, I, I kind of, maybe he should just double down on what he was. You think he should be the one? Like he should just kind of be like a Twitch streamer and just worry maybe about his views and being like chaotic on like a Fortnite game or basically not doing it in real life but doing it being chaos being a troll maybe yeah he could do that maybe he maybe he he thinks to make happy his fans happy maybe yeah what if he he 
takes it super seriously. Yeah. Like, because he didn't take anything seriously. Right. So maybe he takes his, his streaming career very seriously, but because of that, he's very stilted, very boring. Yeah. And he needs the old Skyler to, like, succeed in that in any way. Right. So maybe he's going for... It could be super early in it. Maybe he's going for affiliate status. Maybe he's going for partner. And that could be his... Yeah. Like, he ends by getting that status. Yeah. By taking more risks. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he doesn't try to go against the algorithm. You know, yeah, like, yeah. people are... Everyone's playing this one game, and he's like, there's this other game I'm really interested in, but that's not where the money is. Yeah, or maybe he starts... His maybe game. he's... Well, he starts that, or maybe he starts streaming part of the, uh, the road trip. Yeah. And the person... When he finally shows his personality... Yeah, he's able to... It, it, it like gets him some traction. I want there to be because I just thought of it. There needs to be a prank in the in the movie. Uh huh. I think it should be a drunken prank, and I think it should be all three of them. Because last time you weren't allowed to be in the prank because you were on a date. Right. So I think it should be all three of them doing something. So if it's camping, maybe it's like there's maybe another camping like people that where it kind of digs the, well, we can hash out, but I want them to do something where there's like a bonding moment. Yeah. Where it doesn't, because I'm going to assume there will be like moments of tension and like character breakthroughs and like, you know, why did it take us this long? Well, you were so busy doing X, Y, Z, or, you know, you have no enthusiasm for life and, you know, you're just such a sad sack now. Of course, we're not going to try to like hang out with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I wanted there to be like a bonding, a positive kind of bonding moment. And I think doing a prank, because that'll ignite Skyler. I think it would ignite Xander and Cooper again mm-hmm. in, that, in that regard. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I also, so we did, we did a lot of shooting, especially Justin and I. Yeah. Uh, we, had, we did a eight minute like prequel story yeah. of just Xander and Cooper hanging out mm-hmm. and, uh, it was Cooper's first time drinking, and also Josh's first time drinking in real life. Was it really? Yeah, that was my first time I ever drank. Aww. Yeah, so hey, it's sweetie. Yeah, sweaty. <laughs> my first drink was whiskey and for uh, character research. Yes, we had we were like for for science. For science, yeah. yeah I'm not breaking like, the rules. I'm not doing it. I'm doing it for the part. <laughs> Our I, teacher would be. <laughs> I feel. I feel like uh, that that scene where Jeff and Abed. Um, Drink. He's like, uh, what is it, Martin? Yeah, he drank drink with, with De Niro. De Niro, yeah. Uh, but I want to do another one of those, but maybe they smoke pot for the first time. At 30? Yeah. Okay. I mean, sometimes, I mean, not everyone smokes early. That's true. Like, Joe Rogan talks about it, how he didn't start smoking until he was, like, late 20s. Really? Uh-huh. So, I think that could be, because I still think Cooper would be very Straight reserved. Least. Yeah, and I, I think Chelsea was also a pretty reserved person. Yeah. So I would imagine he didn't really adventure out. So if, if Xander can get him high, I think that would be an interesting... Uh, depending on how we do the, the story, maybe. Yeah. Let's say it is camping, and Skyler goes to sleep or something. Yeah. Or he goes and fucks off and does whatever. Yeah. Then the Xander and Cooper hash it out. Maybe they're mad at each other. Yeah, I think that would be interesting that they mad at each other. I think um, it should be... Maybe uh, Xander is still in the hometown which would also, you know, give him that stunted, I'm not going anywhere feel. Yeah. And maybe, because you already left, like, you know, maybe I'm mad at you. Like you feel abandoned. For leaving. Yeah, I feel abandoned. And you can be mad at me because maybe I wasn't there for you emotionally or like I never checked to see how you were doing. Mm -hmm. Like something like that. Like you needed something from me that I wasn't able to provide you. Right. I think uh, a good, if, if we go that way, it could be, I think uh, Cooper being upset that uh, Xander didn't give him something that he didn't even ask for, kind of hitting like, on the point. Like, I, it could just be, like, following up and seeing how he's doing. Yeah. But, I, like, I know that I sometimes have a tendency to get upset when people don't do things, even though I never asked. And yeah. There's no reason that they would know. You know, like if Jordan doesn't clean up the kitchen when I think that he should. Yeah. I've gotten much better where I, I realize I never said, hey, can you clean up your stuff? Right. But that kind of thing. Because I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. Can relate to. Yeah. It's like, oh, why didn't they do that? Well, did you ask them? Yeah. They're not mind readers. Yeah, exactly. 
So if that is the uh, the conflict, I think that could be a, a, a touchstone. And then, because they also have valid reasons for that, which is, you know, whenever I asked how you were, uh, you were, you always said fine. And then I left it at that. I'm not going to delve in deeper right. for something because you're obviously hurting. And then you could be like, I needed to live my life. And you obviously were going in a different direction. And Because that's unfortunately what happens with growing up. And, you know, there's reasons for that. Yeah. But I think that could be a really interesting dynamic because we've never played that. And we've never had like a conversation like that. I never, I, I honestly never feel like you abandoned me or anything, but there's definitely like not a fall from grace, but a fall from communication. Like I said, that we stopped kind of talking regularly and, yeah. and it wasn't until, you know, a major life change for me that I came like almost crawling back, you know? I, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't, I don't see it as crawling, crawling back, Yeah, but I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So I, I think play, playing into that would, it would be interesting. Yeah. I like that, and I. Uh, we also did intros for each each person. We did two. We did two different kinds of videos. Yeah. We did the the talking to the camera, and we did like the prequel to the actual show. It was like the wake up. It was yeah, like it was everyone waking up. Yeah, just to get a an idea of their characters before meeting them. Yeah, like and yours I, was you. You kind of came up inside, wasn't what? it? When like when you woke up, like you woke up inside and then yours was a very straight laced getting ready in the morning yeah i think we actually used it for the the legitimate open opening of the episode yeah i think we new we text made... message from Ooh, a new text message ah! okay i didn't want to give uh any phone numbers on the podcast no oh, i think that's just like an ad oh is it yeah i'll check it later okay right. shit um, probably subway going like hey did you want to get a <laughs> self sandwich Ooh, 11 inches? 11 whole inches? I have to unsubscribe to that. I, I subscribed to that back when I lived in Largo, and I was getting, and there was a subway next door. Mm, so, that makes sense. Yeah. When it's close, it, it's valuable. Oh, yeah. Um, um, the reason I was saying that is I want to do those shorts again, and yeah. the two ideas that I had were uh, like 30 seconds of them in the morning. I was thinking showering, not showing them naked, but oh, like, like, a, like a single camera shot from outside of the shower curtain yeah and then it ends with them opening the shower curtain and the title screen coming up yeah because i think that is an interesting way to show characterization like um like cooper might sing he, he sing and like every time he fucks up a little bit he just like beats himself up yeah or he gets quieter he's like i don't i don't want to i guess I, i'm sorry start apologizing to someone who's not there yeah oh, uh, i like that xander could scream just be upset at just having to be up that early. Yeah. Skyler maybe doesn't even shower. No, just immediately goes to his computer. Yeah. Or it, it could show... I don't know if... I bet Mike would do it, but if, if it just shows the shower and you don't hear it running... Yeah, you just hear him getting up and, like, walking. And, and, then, and then maybe he goes into the bathroom, like, starts to brush his teeth and says, Meh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he would do something. Yeah, I, my original thought was he goes to the bathroom, but I think it's better if he just, like, doesn't yeah. brush his teeth. To show that he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Because since one of the plot points was uh, kind of giving up a personal hygiene, if he's a streamer, that ties in really well. Oh, definitely. Just because you have to be on 24-7. Yeah. And it's like no one can smell you. Yeah. Exactly. So. You're behind a, a screen. I've noticed that just from working from home. I still brush my teeth and shower, but yeah. sometimes I just don't change out of my pajamas for an hour or two. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Do you, do you want to talk about something? It's fine. I am try I want to get up earlier. Yeah. The problem is, if I get up earlier, I want to work out, and if I work out in the morning, I pull something. Gotcha. So my, I mean, I've got a pretty good schedule now. I get up at seven, clock in, and while all my code pulls, I uh, like brush my teeth and everything, yeah. and I work out in between uh, work and then whatever I do in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, do you have to go to the bathroom? No, but do you? What? Oh, that's so thoughtful of you. I do. Okay, so... so we should find a place to would stop. You, would you like to find a pit stop, Josh? Yeah. Okay. That's also a good way to end this podcast. Would you like to end the podcast? Because I have to go to the bathroom, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, thanks for thanks for listening. Um, yeah. I, I will still do 
an intro to this to give it a little more context. Yeah. And uh, love you all. I think you're all right. Bye. Bye.